Hello and welcome. While parents have long found the task of what to pack in children's lunch boxes, just a little daunting. You know, what's healthy, what isn't, what will be eaten and what won't. And, and the concerns, of course, when your child comes home from school and their lunchbox is still full and it's every parent's worst nightmare. Let's face it, life is busy and stressful enough, especially with everything that we're living through at the moment. So we're here today to help by sharing expert information that is aimed to help support busy parents. And to help provide this support, along with nourishing lunchbox options, we welcome back Siobhan Boyle, CEO. CEO of Jamie Oliver's Ministry of Food, who Kittypedia is honoured to be in partnership with. Thank you for joining us and welcome back. How are you doing? Rachel, how are you today? Yeah, I'm really excited to be chatting with you um, here in Melbourne and we've sort of gone into stage four, which is um, for anyone um, in Victoria knows it's a bit of a challenging time at the moment. Here in Australia, as we know, we've got a huge disparity between our states and territories as to who has children back in the classroom and who, um, who has children back into remote and distant learning. Um, so I guess either way, even if parents, um, you know, with the, with the lunchbox debate, um, even if they are home in isolation, they still have to prepare their children's lunches every day. Um, and, you know, I guess throughout this COVID period, we've spoken with so many experts who have all recommended that when home in isolation, that providing children with structure in their day is vitally important. I'd, I'd love to know initially, do you think that, you know, even for the people home in isolation at the moment, preparing um, a homemade version of a, a lunchbox and could maybe, maybe a good idea for families at the moment? <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a really good idea. As you said, it gives um, parents that structure in the day. It also gives kids that structure in the day. I mean, we all like a little bit of routine. And especially now where the world has been flipped upside down and all of our routines have been sort of taken a little <laughs> bit know. off course, at least this way, um, it's putting a little bit of control back. Parents can kind of put together the lunch boxes in the morning. It feels like their children can then take charge of their snacks and their lunches. And, you know, they know that the kids aren't going to be sort of reaching sort of for unhealthy treats and pestering exactly. them all day. So I think it's yeah. a really positive thing to do. And actually, you know, something also that the kids can get involved with too, um, get them involved in that process. And so, you know, hopefully they'll consume what they've been, um, they've put in their lunch boxes because um, they won't have children um, around them saying, oh, I don't like the look of that. So hopefully <laughs> they'll be sort of um, more, more likely to consume, you know, what they've chosen for the day. And it's bringing some... I guess, sense of normality back to something that a situation is anything but normal <laughs> at the moment. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Gosh, absolutely. I know. I know. Who, who knows what normal is? I mean, they, they said they're describing this as the new normal. This is the new normal. new normal. I know. <laughs> Oh, now we published your article, Lunch Boxes with Purpose. Now, for someone who hasn't yet read the article, can you p please tell us what it's about and just tell us what inspired you to write it? So um, the importance of what you put in your kids' lunch boxes is more than just food. Um, I'm not sure whether you're all aware, but there are some pretty but scary statistics out there when it comes to children's health. Um, we know that 27% of Australian children are overweight or obese. And this is the first generation of children that are not expected to outlive their parents. So that's some pretty scary <laughs> facts to swallow. Um, however, you know, the good news is making um, your children's lunch boxes it means that you are actually in total control over what you're feeding your children. So you have a chance to influence how they learn through the day, how they behave through the day. Yeah. And also, you're also influencing their futures as well, because we know what we feed our children will also have an impact on their mental health outcomes in adult life. So it's not just the now and nourishing their bodies, but it's nourishing their minds for the future too. So it's so important. And, you know, starting with something as simple Simple as a lunchbox is a really great way of doing this. Well said, well said. And as you mentioned, the article does provide some confronting stats and facts. And, you know, like you said, whilst we're not here to lecture and preach, let's face it, everyone's going through a hard enough time as it is at the moment. We do really need to address these important issues so that then they, they won't be heightened. And, um, you know, I guess during the pandemic, um, for example, the, kids that are snacking on junk food and those types of things as well and obesity um, levels increasing um, 
these are really important issues that we don't want to just sweep under the carpet at the moment. Um, and at the moment, we need to ensure that are being addressed during the pandemic. So things post post pandemic life aren't necessarily going to be sort of worse off than where where they already are. So just initially, I just wanted to to address some of these sort of confronting stats, and I'd love to love for you to share some of the some of them that you feel parents should be aware of just initially. So as I as I mentioned, with the twenty seven percent of kids yep. um, in Australia being overweight or obese, um, which which is pretty scary in itself. So that's over a quarter of children. Incredible. And um, and and unfortunately, you know, children don't have control over their diets. So this is a parents and adult responsibility. So we are completely responsible for them until until they leave us. So um, you know, it's so important um, getting kids eating the right foods. Um, we know that 84.8 percent of children aged 12 to 17 fail to consume four serves of vegetables per day. So, which is quite scary as well. So it's not just the, the obesity and being overweight that's an issue. We know that kids aren't consuming the recommended daily amounts of fruit and vegetables too. So it's, you know, it's also that the, um, the effects of being overweight isn't just the negative effects on the body. It's the effect, the negative effects they can have with other children as well. So, um, you know, children who are overweight are more likely to be bullied too. So, um, you know, no one wants their child to go through that. So, you know, it's not just the mental health. It's not just the effects on their bodies. It's that sort of holistic um, approach to um, at school as well um, that kids can be quite cruel. You know, we want to enable our children to have the best possible outcomes and so you know by making sure we're feeding them the right foods putting the right ingredients in their lunch boxes and you know keeping them aware of what they're eating as well um, we're going to hopefully sort of um, give them the best possible chances within school and then for their futures too. Absolutely. And we've got all of that, that information in the article, which will have the link in the show notes. But um, the next point is it's not all bad news. Um, you now, what are some of the good news that you can maybe share with us? Well, the good news is that diet related disease is uh, both reversible and preventable. And we Absolutely. know that kids who learn to cook have better diets and are more aware of the importance of making healthier choices. So getting kids in the kitchen too. So as I mentioned at the beginning, getting kids to help you putting together their lunch boxes, that will sort of um, enable them to make better choices. And they're more aware of, you know, why they're doing that. And so if that's instilled from a young age, they because those, those good habits become the norm. So that's a really important thing to do. But that's another thing, a piece of good news, because as I said, we, we, we can reverse this scary trend. And we know that we get the kids involved in the kitchen, they're, they're more likely to make those choices. Yes. And, um, we know as well that kids who are eating healthier lunches are performing better at school. They're less likely to take days off. They're more motivated. They have better behavior. And we know that um, they are going to have an increased enthusiasm towards learning. So these are all really positive outcomes of uh, transforming your children's lunch boxes. Um, we also know that if you get kids involved right at the beginning of a food cycle and get them growing food too, they're actually much more likely to eat those ingredients too. So there's lots of real positives to come out of this. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, and the, in all honesty, um, if you prioritize your children's health, then you're going to prioritize what you're putting in their lunch boxes because it then becomes a priority. Yes. So, um, it's, and, and you know we can all make that time and some small positive changes. We're not um, saying you need to totally reinvent the wheel, but yes. you know, some really small positive changes, making sure you're always including fruits and vegetables, whole grains, give them water to drink instead of um, sugary milk drinks or, or you know, poppers or those um, other sort of fruit juice drinks. Um, you can really sort of make some positive shifts. And I think you'll notice those changes in your children. Mm -hmm. and as you said, eating habits are set in the first few years of life. And when we encourage good, healthy food, um, you know, habits, um, children will take those habits into their adult life. I'd love to know um, also, you know, what are your top ingredients 
um, and a great suggestions for boosting um, mental health because you've, you've mentioned that a couple of times, um, which is vitally important, um, that the, the quality of the food is going to affect their learning and their mental health. So is there anything in particular that you think from an ingredient pers perspective, um, what suggestions do you have for boosting mental health then? So um, we know that fruit, vegetables and whole grains mm -hmm. um, improve anxiety in children and, and adults too. So this doesn't need to be um, just the rules for kids. Um, for boosting their mood, cottage cheese and air pop popcorn. So who doesn't love popcorn? And popcorn is a great little snack. You can do that at home. Easy to do. I can I eat popcorn Winner. every day and be fine. Yep. <laughs> totally. But that's good for boosting your mood. We know that... Um, <laughs> tuna so like making a nice tuna sushi roll or something or even you know if you want to buy a sort of brown root rice tuna sushi roll that's great for concentration so that's a total win too um if you're feeling irritable or unsettled um celery is really calming so nice crunchy celery sticks are very calming for you and bananas and walnuts are very good for depression now walnuts may be a little controversial because of the nuts and school issue but bananas bananas are great for lunch boxes because you don't need to wrap them so good for the whole nude food naked food movement too and um you know and bananas are great energy boosters and they're a boost for depression so total win all round so some really good ingredients there anxieties fruit vegetables whole grains mood boosters can be the cottage cheese and air popped popcorn concentration is um the omega-3s with tuna um and when they're feeling unsettled is quinoa and celery as you just mentioned and depression is um walnuts and if, they, if they've got um a nut allergy of course you've just got bananas as, as well for, for depression uh, and or just sort of mood enhancing overall um in saying that we mean what what are your top sort of lunchbox tips that you'd like to be able to share with us today so um as i just mentioned as well um when you are sort of packing a lunchbox yeah. um always offer water so it's the most um healthiest and most thirst quenching option available so always pop water into your lunch boxes um, especially in a climate i know we're in winter at the moment but winter will soon be over and so you know making sure that your little people are well hydrated is is a really key thing um you know plan, planning ahead so making and freezing um portions so that it's not laborious because you know everyone is time poor and so making a head frittatas, savory mushrooms, zucchini slices, they're great to sort of make and freeze in little portions, ready to pull out to pop into the lunch boxes. Um, a great way of sort of making, including those whole grains, which as I said before, is really good for anxiety, yeah, um, yeah. is doing, just switching to, um, you know, wholemeal bread instead, or if you're making a wrap, using a wholemeal wrap. So it's those small little changes, which can really sort of make all of that difference. Yes. Um, yeah, great advice. And then, and then, you know, making sure that snacks that you're packing are good, healthy snacks too. So um, it's not... You don't need to sort of be reinventing and creating sort of healthy versions of processed food. Um, you know, having lovely crudités and cherry tomatoes, cubes of really delicious cheese, um, some frozen yogurt, even some plain baked pretzels are really good options. And fruits like strawberries are, are, are great for snacking on too. So it's kind of and making sure that, you know, they've got a, a really interesting variety of food. Um, they've got a rainbow of food. At, of ingredients in their lunchbox because you eat with your eyes don't you you don't want yes. your lunchbox to look sad and and you know we're very lucky now we didn't have these when we were kids um but they have all these amazing bento boxes i was going to ask now. you what your thoughts are on bento boxes yes oh, they're incredible um and they're yeah. so good and um we actually sort of and you know we work with the company for stuck on you and we actually do Same. um and, and which is fantastic. And they, they produce these wonderful boxes, um, which are so kid friendly. And, you know, they've got all the little sections that you can put your fruits and your protein and, and everything in. And so, you know, they're pre-designed. It means that things don't get mushed together. And, um, you know, they pop them in their little bags with a cool box and um, it keeps everything really lovely and fresh um, until they're ready to eat. So I think they're brilliant. So, I mean, kids today are really lucky. They've got all of these things in their favour. And, you know. Oh, to be so, again. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> if only. I wanted to ask your opinion, you know, what should parents do if their children really dictate what they want in their lunch boxes? And especially if they're unhealthy options, as an example, do you have any, any advice for a parent that maybe, for example, is being sort of 
you know, like for example, they are providing some healthy options and the kids aren't necessarily liking and or wanting them. So the child is maybe dictating a little bit what I want and I know I will eat this type of thing. Any, I don't um, know. <laughs> there's, there's always a bit of pester power from kids. And let's be honest, you know, sort of, and children will always say, I don't like this, I don't like this. But um, the good news is that you can change their habits. So, um, it's yes. not saying change it all overnight because like with anything, if you do that, people, people won't, people will resist change. Whereas you could, if you start to make small changes, um, you know, if they're used to having unhealthy, lots of unhealthy snacks in their lunch boxes, switch one for something homemade instead. And so, you know, you're giving them those options and then that becomes the norm. And then, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting a delicious home baked treat in there. Anything home baked is always going to be better than shop bought because you've got total control over the ingredients you're using. So it's not saying you can't have treaty ingredients in there, like a home baked slice. The balance. Or a bit of, yeah. But it's yeah. just if you've made it yourself, then at least you you know what's gone into it. So um and yeah. it is sort of switching switching those things going, actually I'm going to this week I'm going to bake this and that's going to be their treat of the well, week. Well that's what I wanted to so, ask you about variety. You know, it, it does make food interesting and making um I guess kids with sandwiches as an example, eating the same sandwich every day but maybe just changing the snack food may end up that kids sort of love their snacks and thinking that the sandwich is a chore. So I wanted to know from your perspective how often should parents shake up the traditional menu offering with new selections I mean do you think that they should just stick to the tried and true options that they know the kids are going to eat and they're going to come home and their lunchbox is going to be sort of empty and or offer the same types of things every day just as a general question like what do you think I think um, it's good to mix it up um, you'll know the ingredients that your kids will like, but also it's good to kind of, you know, display things in different ways because you do eat with your eyes. So, um, you know, and I guess as a parent, it's a bit boring if you're always making the same thing, if you're always making the same sandwiches every day. As well for the parent, sushi. of course, yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, I think having that variety is good and, you know, mixing it up because we all like to eat variety in our diet. And, you know, sometimes um, the, the, their taste buds develop. So something they may not have liked so much. And um, they then... The as palate you know, changes. Like, exactly. And so a so, year later, they'll be like, oh, that's wonderful. So I think sort of <laughs> giving, giving a bit of variety, but also you don't want to become disheartened as a parent to, to, to be putting stuff in your children's lunch boxes and, and then to keep coming home full because, you know, that's going to be quite demoralizing. And also... People don't want to waste money by seeing food going to waste as well. So as well. there is that fine balance of, you know, what what's going to work for your family. But, you know, keeping in mind fresh is best. If you're homemade is best and eating that rainbow. So making sure there's always a beautiful array of colors of fruits and vegetables in there. So, so, I mean, in saying that, so what foods should a parent always aim to include in their child's lunch boxes in? So in, in terms of what should be in a lunchbox, um, I would always ha include um, fruits, make sure there's fruits and vegetables, yep. there's whole grains, there's dairy, um, yep. some form of protein, nice healthy protein in there, um, whether that's in the form of um, the tuna or some chicken in yep. your sandwich, and then a healthy snack as well. So, you know, but, and those are kind of some good guidelines. So if you can tick all of those off your list, you're kind of like, you, yep, <laughs> you, you, you're, you're off to a there. good start. Yeah, well, exactly. Talk, talking about the snacks, in, I mean, su supermarket shelves are filled with lots of packets of easy lunchbox treats, and they sort of masquerade, I guess, healthy food in, in a lot of instances. The problem is most are loaded with sugar, salt, fat, and often sort of offer very little nutritional value. Um, I'd love to know from your perspective, do you think all packaged snacks are actually bad uh, for children as a general no, term question? No not, all no, not all packaged snacks are bad. My advice would be to always read the label. Yes. Um, the labels, food labels can't lie. So um, always look at the list of ingredients on the back of a packet first yeah and um, and if it's full of a list of things that you probably don't recognize or it's a list as long as your arm you probably don't want to be giving that Rhythm. to your kids yeah yeah um, of course the health star they do have a health star rating on the front of 
snacks nowadays and um, you know that can be a little confusing as well I mean it's it's a system that was designed you know to, to make this whole process easier because we all know that sometimes we need to sort of reach for something that is convenient and of course you want to be making those the best, those best possible options and selections when you're doing that um, so you know but if that's the thing with a health star rating is you're comparing like for like so if, for example, you picked up a muesli bar, now muesli bar is one of those things which everyone I think of as healthy. Yes, but it's full of sugar. They're laden with sugar. Yeah. And actually, you're better off making something homemade and delicious than popping a muesli bar into, into your lunch boxes. Um, but, you know, if you did want to go down that route, um, you would compare like for like, and it would, and it compares, you know, in, in, you know, the levels of sugar and salt and ingredients. And so it has a different star rating. So you can compare in category uh -huh. um, for, for a muesli bar. But I'm trying to sort of stick to a sort of homemade options, sort of, um, you know, unsalted pretzels, unsalted um, popcorn, you know, ready. Yeah, and, and so, you know, those sort of options are, are yeah. far better um, than um, actually kind of reaching for, you know, the, the packet snack options. And, you know, in, in saying that, I mean, especially for the kids that are back at school at the moment, back in the classroom, they're, they're, they're more interested in, in playtime, you know, obviously being with their friends and running and playing sport than eating. Um, so, I mean, grab and go stuff works well with, um, with kids that, um, that like to get out and play and be active. So I just wanted to know just quickly too, what are your top selection for um, easy to prepare, like portable snacks? Anything in particular? You've mentioned some um, sort of sushi hand rolls um, with something like a hard boiled egg or cheese sticks um, or something oh, like that or, you know, absolutely. in the squeezy yogurts and those types of things as well. Yeah, if you, yeah like if you're going for a plain, um, plain yogurt, that's a great, you know, because you can get those squeezy yogurts, which are good. And if you go for a plain one, which isn't sweetened, that's even better. Um, and then, you know, little, those little bocconcini balls are great. Um, crudite, um, so just chopped up veggies, you know, in, in stick form, that's always good. And yeah, as you, as you mentioned, cube cookies are really good. Um, baked pretzels, hard boiled eggs. You've got, um, you know, if you are allowed nuts, nuts with cranberry, sometimes you get those little trail mixes that they're, they're really good too. So it's um, depending on what you're allowed to sort of give your children in the yes. school um, setting. Um, and yeah, and brown rice sushi, that, that's always a great option too. So there are lots of options out there. So you're not limited um, just because you're not reaching for a packet of food. For, as well. And you mentioned earlier before also about homemade um, treats as well and it's okay to have this sort of food this food sometimes as well and I've read um, you know in, in a lot of different sort of forums and whatnot that allocating a bake day once a month is, is a great great thing to do um, and to freeze some of those healthy lunchbox um, treats as well um, and it's also good for the family budget um, in a lot of instances now too because families um, having to sort of to be more cautious um, sort of about these things I'd love to know from your perspective what sort of savory things are, are good that um, I guess that a family could then pop into the freezer if they're going to sort of go ahead with that sort of baking sort of day once a month? Well, I mean, the frittatas, and I, uh, they're great to make in little muffin tins. Yes. Um, so yes. that's super easy. Um, you know, it's like the cheap peach, isn't it? And you can put them in little baking paper so they're nice and portable yep. and they freeze brilliantly. So, um, you know, make it and that's a great way of sneaking veggies in. Um, at, savory slices like a zucchini slice perfect and um, yep. even like little savory muffins are really good too so um, we've got a gorgeous um spinach and feta recipe um for muffins and they are super super delicious they're a bit of a winner and um you know they're, and, and they're great for freezing so anything like that you know which you can kind of make into little mini versions and so all you've got to do is pull pop them out the freezer and pop them into their lunch boxes and you've got something good to go and you know you can do them in batches of 12 or 24 and you know it's taking a lot of the heavy lifting out of the day wow. for you which is amazing a healthier option what about sweet stuff then you've got fruit muffins you've got pikelets maybe some low sugar biscuits high fiber ingredients maybe fill them up what are your thoughts yeah and there's nothing wrong as well with making a beautiful banana bread or you know baking a savory uh, baking a beautiful slice as well so you know and even some homemade biscuits because you have total control over what you're putting into those ingredients so you know as we know um, a lot of the snacks that are out there and are available are energy dense 
and they've got no nutritional value. So, um, yeah. and also they won't keep your children full, which is, you know, <laughs> we all know what like when want. kids are running around, <laughs> that, you know, they're like, I want more, I want more, I want more. And so um, if, if, you know, if you know that, you know, whatever you're feeding them and even if, whether that's the, the, the bulk of their lunch boxes or it's the snacks you're putting in, um, you know, if you're, if you've got, if you're making those from scratch, and you know, even if it is a home baked cake, that's going to be way better than yes. um, something you bought from and, shops. And not all parents really have the time to bake if they are sort of working from home now and all those types of things. So I'd love to know: Do you have any, any other savoury tips um, for healthy lunch boxes like hummus, um, rice crackers, carrots, and celery? The crudite that you're talking about before with carrots and celery sticks. Um, you mentioned before about the sushi as well. Um, those types of things. Is there anything else, or is this sort of what I guess some of the ideas that parents should be considering? if they don't have time to go ahead and bake either savory or sweet uh, stuff. Yeah, totally. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, sort of, if you, um, you, you, I know you can get those little pots of like cheese and dip and, yeah, and yep. crackers, but actually, you know, do that yourself, get yourself some plain crackers um, without salt in them and, you know, cut them off some good cheese. And, yep. you know, that's a great little snack. Um, you know, sort of making, making your banana bread. You can always make your banana bread into muffins too. Yes. It's way better if you make it yourself. Um, you know, mixing um, some Greek yogurt with frozen berries rather than yep. flavoured yogurt. Because if you're adding natural sweetness in, that's a total win. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, little pancakes. We've got oh, pancakes are a great one. Um, Jamie's got a great recipe, a one cup pancake recipe. Yeah. And it's one cup of flour, one cup of milk and one egg. You whisk together and they yep. make perfect little pancakes. You can make little minis, which are wonderful. So um, awesome. yeah, lots of options there. For, and do you think every lunchbox should include protein, such as lean meat and cheese as well? What are your thoughts about that? Absolutely. You need that in there. And that's an essential element to all lunch boxes. Um, and it should be included because that's going to sort of help fuel their brains um, as well as their bodies too, especially, you know, as we know, little bodies are very active. So, you know, really important to getting that protein element in there too. And the only other thing I just wanted to fo um, follow on with, I mean, afternoon snacks. If kids haven't eaten their lunch, they're going to come home famished and eat several packets of snack foods and junk food. And then of course, they're going to struggle to finish their dinner, which is every parent's nightmare yeah. as well. So I just wanted to know about your favorite afternoon snack picks. So um, for example, you know, if, if there was maybe um, some fruit in their um, lunch box that they didn't eat, maybe making it into a smoothie, um, but things like crackers with tomato and cheese can help as well. Um, but I'd love to know, like, what are your afternoon snack um, sort of tips um, and advice for parents like pre-dinner? <laughs> I mean, yeah, a smoothie is always a good option because that's a great way of kind of getting your um, getting getting your fruit in there. Um, yeah. But you know, making beautiful fruit platters, you know, make it exciting, you know, um, and, and and get the kids involved in that too. So if you make a fruit or vegetable platter, and um, they're going to eat with their eyes, and they're going to think that you know it's it, it's something that they want they want to eat. So um, if it, it looks appealing and it's not all squished and it's presented beautifully, um, then you're much more likely to get them to eat it as well like with fruit skewers as well you know threading it's amazing what putting a food on a stick does um <laughs> suddenly it becomes it takes it to a different dimension and kids love it so and yeah, if, it, if the cupboards like, are wow, bare as well strawberries and grapes onto a stick yeah <laughs> Yes. And if the cupboards are bare at the moment too, maybe even just a bowl of high fiber cereal may even just do the trick as well. Because um, getting to the super supermarket can be a little bit of a chore down here in Melbourne at the moment. Now, yeah, of course. Now, really quickly, did you just tell us a little bit more about the, the Good Foundation um, and I guess the online programs with cooking lessons, um, I guess that, that parents can be accessing sort of um, home while, whilst they're in isolation. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's so wonderful to have been able to come on to talk to you today um, about healthy lunch boxes. And you know, sort of one of the things we do know is that, you know, um, as a foundation, that you know, it's not just telling people what they should be doing, it's equipping them with those skills so they can, are enabled to make those better choices for their families. So we have two wonderful programs that we proudly deliver in Australia. Yep. We have Jamie Oliver's Learn Your Fruit and Veg program, which yep. is for the kids from three to 12. And then we we have Jamie's Ministry of Food, which we deliver, which um, from 12 to 90 plus. 
Yep. And this is where we teach back to basic cooking skills and yep. we instill positive eating habits in a fun and engaging way so we can transform Australian communities. Yep. So we know it's the importance of upskilling rather than just telling people what to do because we know telling people what to do doesn't always work. And, you know, people... Um, often know what to do they just need to know how to do it and you know they want to have the confidence in the kitchen and that's what we do with our wonderful cooking programs so um in saying that we'll have all of the links um through to um to i guess to all the different parts of your website where people can contact you and everything else um otherwise besides that is there anything else any other key messages that you'd like to share with anyone watching and listening today um, I think it's just, I just wanted to reiterate just how important it is um, getting your kids um, eating the right foods and um, just, you know, the importance of what you put in their lunch boxes. I know it might seem like a chore, but it's not just fueling their mind and their bodies. It's also shaping them up for healthy, happy and future. So it's really, it is what we feed our kids now is so, so important. Getting them involved in the kitchen, really key too. And, you know, have some fun with this because cooking and food is fun. It's not only delicious, but it's, it's, a, it's it should be fun. And it, and it makes the world go round. So, you know, that's Absolutely. what we want to instill with our, with our foundation and with our programs. And, and hopefully we'll continue to do that. And your online program, as you said before, has got cookie, cooking lessons and a whole heap of different delicious and nutritious meals um, using Jamie Oliver's recipe. So we'll have all of those links in the show notes. Siobhan, an absolute pleasure to catch up and to chat to you about this, um, this topic today. And uh, looking forward to, to hopefully speaking with you in the next couple of weeks. And until then, take care and stay safe. <laughs> Wonderful, Rachel. Thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward to chatting to you. I think we're chatting again next week. So we will have another catch up next week. Can't wait. Wonderful. Take care. Stay safe. See ya. You too. Bye.